had a number of people email us and ask about how we like our gas coach and whether or not we consider their diesel. And we love our gas coach, and yes, we did consider diesels, but this ended up being the one that worked well for us and our needs for a number of reasons, with floor plan, layout, and price point. But uh, you probably have seen a recent video that uh, Jason and Nikki Wynn from Gone With The Winds put up about their thoughts on their gas coach and how it drove and it's a fantastic video which really gives a great experience of when they're driving in Alaska and how their coach is performing and the noise, the engine noise and the performance and we've had a few of our followers ask us for our thoughts on similar things and so we thought we would weigh in with a few comments on that because ours is a different brand of coach being a Tiffin, uh, they've got a Fleetwood Bounder but they're both a Ford V10 engine so I'm going to hand over to Mark to talk about all the engine stuff. Yep, our coach is the Tiffin 35QBA. It's on the 22,000 pound chassis with the Ford V10. Um, most, almost all newer gas coaches are on this same platform or a heavier weight chassis, but the same v Ford V10 is in almost all gas coaches. Um, we find that almost always when we're driving, it's usually very calm and quiet. On some, the cruise control can get a little funny. It has some really weird shift points. It immediately shifts down too much. The winds did a fantastic job on that video. I agree a lot with what they said. Um, but that said, our coach definitely is a little quieter than the one that they tend to travel in, um, or are traveling in right now. I think that as long as you put it in tow mode and the shift, the shift points are much better than if you're not in tow mode. And um, if you're gonna go see a hill, I will usually give it a little gas to put it in the gear that I want ahead of time so it doesn't do the funny shifting. But uh, I do absolutely love pusher diesels. They drive beautifully. Uh, they're so stable. Uh, they don't have any side to side rocking and they don't, and they have more power, especially on the big hills and especially at altitude. But most all of our driving, is relatively flat, lower altitude, and so the power of the coach is plenty for me most of the time, and I do love having a little performance on a car. But for the price point change, now it's all about floor plan, because we move very slowly. We spend hundreds of hours in the coach for every few hours we drive it, because we stay in places for a week to three weeks. A little more floaty than a diesel, and on big hills, you feel the power difference and it'll get a little more noisy, but most of the time, it's really, really a pleasant drive. It's really smooth. You still have the nice big open windows to look out. You still have the big comfy seats and you also have the larger wheels, which help smooth out a lot of those little bumps. Get on really rough road or really steep roads, you'll definitely notice you're in a gas versus a diesel. One of the biggest points of difference is braking. A diesel usually will have air brakes along with that air suspension, and the air brakes are much more powerful. And they also have engine brakes that do a fantastic job of holding speed, whereas a gas coach, you really all you can do is downshift the engine. It's not the same as a diesel motor arms engine brake. It definitely helps keep your speed reduced and, and reduces the need for using the brakes, which is a very good thing because this coach on a long steep hill, if you didn't use tow molt or using downshifted gears, you'd probably overheat the brakes. First seeing how long it takes to go zero to 60. I'm towing the Mini. Fully loaded. 60 miles an hour, 30 seconds. All right, so there you go. Zero to 60 in 30 seconds with our coach. Now, granted, we are at low altitude. We're currently probably only 300 feet altitude, so near sea level, which of course makes a big difference. I did notice that we didn't have nearly as much power when we were up in the mountains or the higher elevations. But when we know we're going to be going up hills or at higher elevation, we just 
know that we're not going to be going as quickly. And when we travel, it's all about the journey, not the destination. We're usually not in any kind of hurry at all. We're just out to enjoying the drive and enjoying it. And our main focus is, of course, being safe out on the road. This is a large vehicle. It's not going to handle like a car. There's some other drivers that are not perhaps as competent as we'd like to think. And so our big focus is on safety. We take our time, especially on hills, up and down the hills. Um, make sure to downshift before you start the hill, not after you've already gained the momentum. One other question we get a lot related to driving the coach is what kind of fuel economy we get. And we usually get right around seven miles per gallon and with an 80 gallon tank that will allow us to travel about 550 miles on one fill up if you go all the way to empty. Now we don't usually do that. We travel a little slower and so I actually don't even fill it a lot of the time because I know I, I want to keep the gas more fresh and so I just usually put the fuel on that I know I'm gonna to need to go the next couple stops usually. Diesel, they often carry a more fuel so they often will carry 100 gallons of fuel. And if you can get nine or 10 miles to the gallon with 100 gallons, that's of course almost a thousand miles. So you can go twice as far on a full tank of fuel in a diesel than a gas coach. The biggest factor in fuel economy is speed. When you drive something with a very flat front, aerodynamics and speed make a huge difference. Uh, we generally travel around 55 to 60 miles an hour, which we find is really kind of a sweet spot. If you travel much faster than that, our mileage will suffer dramatically. Uh, and that's also the fact, the case with a diesel. We have a friend who has a diesel pusher and he was saying that he was getting seven and eight miles to the gallon. And I asked how fast he was driving. I made the suggestion that he bring it down to 55 to 60 miles an hour. And he called me a month later and said, oh, thanks so much. I'm uh, getting 11 and 12 miles to the gallon now. So it was definitely a big improvement for him. But speed is definitely your biggest factor. So another point we wanted to speak to was the noise while driving. We're currently on Interstate 95 southbound heading from Maine down into Massachusetts. So we're in a long, smooth interstate road the road conditions and hopefully you can hear the noise that we're experiencing. Uh, the engine is pretty quiet. This is the dog box they call it down here with uh, which is basically right over the engine and uh, it's pretty well insulated. So as you can hear it's really not that noisy at all. Obviously it doesn't have the quietness of a diesel but I, you know I just wouldn't want people to be afraid of buying a gas coach if that is the one that best fits your price range or any other needs like floor plan or layout as, as that was the case for us. And we have actually found that the engine has never really been an issue in us being able to conduct a conversation or listen to music while we're driving. I think because our coach is a different brand, it's a Tiffin, it tends to be a little quieter, it's well insulated. It's not just the engine noise but it's also our coach is a Tiffin, as Julie mentioned, and it, it has all solid wood cabinetry, and it also, they do a lot of caulking and silicone when they mount fixtures, so every, there's no squeaking or squealing. Um, right. Even when we're on really rough roads, we get a little bit of rattle, but it's minimal. Um, we did see that squeaking, squealing in some of the other gas coaches we test drove, but this coach has been super quiet and smooth all along. Uh, Jason and Nikki, they are a lot younger than us. <laughs> so they travel a lot faster. They and lot those better. guys crank. They're always on the move. Uh, and we, we love those guys and what we learn from them. And uh, just wanted to add a couple of those points to give our perspective. Having owned this coach now for almost a year and a half and still being really, really happy with it. Like I said, in summary, it's not going to drive like a car. Just focus on safety. Don't be in a rush and you'll be just fine with the performance of your gas coach.